Okay, well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. And welcome to the Spokane Dream Center Sunday School. My name is Josh Maltzberger. I am honored, blessed, thankful to be here. Uh, thankful to have the opportunity to spend this time together with the Lord and with all of you and to continue to uh, honor and glorify the one who's given us so many wonderful, life-changing, uh, eternity-changing testimonies. And if you're here and you've given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, if you've responded to that grace-giving message of his atoning sacrifice, his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection, and his sacrifice on your behalf that you could be forgiven and brought near to God, then you are an absolute miracle in my book. So you have a testimony, and we all have a testimony when we're in Christ. Um, I'm going to get out of the way here. Um, I just have a, a three verses, you know, three or four verses here. I was reading in 1 John this morning in my own time, my own quiet time with the Lord, and it just encouraged me as thinking about testimonies and this is his testimony in first john first john chapter one verse one john says we are writing about the word of life in him who existed from the beginning whom we have heard whom we have seen with our own eyes whom we have gazed upon for ourselves and have touched with our own hands and the life an aspect of his being was revealed, was made manifest, demonstrated, and we saw as eyewitnesses and are testifying to and declare to you the life, the eternal life in him who already existed with the Father and who actually was made visible, was revealed to us, his followers. What we have seen and ourselves heard, we are also telling you so that you too may realize and enjoy fellowship as partners and partakers with us. And this fellowship that we have, which is a distinguishing mark of Christians, is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And as we consider communion today, later on, that koinonia, that special fellowship between God Almighty and us through the Son Jesus Christ and one another. Just want to encourage you to be bold and give away. You know, like John John was there, he saw, he heard, he touched Jesus. We don't have, you know, that benefit in the sense of we weren't eyewitnesses, but have you tasted and seen spiritually that the Lord is good? And I know pretty much everybody here has that I you know that I've known for a while John wrote this down and here we are thousands of years later this testimony is still winning people to Christ your testimony God wants to use to draw people to him so this is a hospital it's a training ground this is an opportunity to train amongst you know believers friends family and testify to what the Lord has done in your life. So please, as you come up, announce who you are. Please give us your name. And we're going until a quarter till. And speak you know, <laughs> loud enough if you can. Project loud enough so that we can all hear you. All right? And honor and glorify the King of Kings. I'm going to get out of the way. Let's pray. I'll pray before everybody starts. Heavenly Father, I pray... God, for this group of people, Lord, these brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord, I thank you, God, for each and every soul that you have saved. I thank you for each and every life, Lord God, that you have blessed with forgiveness, with redemption, Lord God, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Lord, I thank you for where we are sitting positionally, and I thank you, Lord God, that you live inside of us. You are God with us, Lord, and you have filled us with your spirit, and you continually fill us, Lord, with yourself, with your goodness, with your faithfulness, with your instruction, Lord God, with your guidance for everyday life, Lord. You've led us into discipleship and following you, Jesus. You've called us to this, Lord, and as this group is walking in that, Lord God, I pray that you would use the testimonies of these saints to encourage and build up all of us, Lord God, to continue fighting the good fight 
and running the race of the faith, Lord God, that truly when we get into glory, we might hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Lord, we are in this together, Lord God, and so I just pray for your people. Stimulate and stir up, Lord God, those great things that you've done inside of them, Lord, as we all are eager to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, everybody. I'm Scott. I was uh, led this morning by a lady on the radio. I, I, I listen to sermons when they have them in the morning, um, it, it interspersed with worship, of course, because uh, that's what we're here for. This is uh, Psalms 107. What the lady said specifically, she said, read Psalms 107, and then it was over. I, I missed everything she said, but I read Psalms 107. Psalm 107. It says, uh, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. That's how it starts. But then it says, let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Um, it says, some wandered in the desert wasteland, finding no, no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. It goes on to say, some sat in darkness, utter darkness, prisoners suffering in iron chains because they rebelled against God's commands. So he subjected them, I'm skipping a few in between, but so he subjected them to bitter labor. They stumbled and there was no one to help. Um, it goes on to say, he brought them out of the darkness, the utter darkness, and broke away their chains. Some became fools through their rebellious ways, it says, and suffered affliction because of their iniquities. They loathed all food and drew near to the gates of death. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. I don't think I could say that any better, you know, it's, uh, that's exactly what happened to me, you know, and, uh, so, thanks. I'm Rebecca, and, um, I just want to testify of God's goodness. Um, I have, um, two scriptures, um, Psalms 30, verse 2, O Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you healed me. Psalms 20, verse 6, Now I know God saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. <clears throat> In August, I had to have my gallbladder removed. Um, the testimony is about God, how fast God moves and um, how faithful he is. Um, day 1, which was Wednesday, I was so sick I couldn't... Um, could not eat. I asked God to either heal me or speak to my leaders to take me to the hospital. The next morning, I got called into the office to let me know they were taking me to the doctor. Went to the ER and the doctor told me my gallbladder needed to be removed. In the process, it was a couple, several month process of um, off and on being in pain and stuff and not being able to eat. Um, day three, was in so much pain and sick, I needed medication, left the discipleship and stayed with a friend of mine and her husband, which was another testimony, but some other time I'll give that. Um, day four, um, at their house, I just slept for 24 hours, didn't eat, didn't do nothing, just slept for 24 hours. Day five, my friend um, woke me up that morning and she was like, I'm taking you to the ER, get up and get dressed. And I was like, I don't want to go. I was like, I don't, I'm in so much pain, I don't want to move. And she's like, get up, we're going, God said to take you. So I went and um, they did an ultrasound and come to find out it was infected and they needed to remove it immediately. So I had surgery. I rested for a day and was back up. So Wednesday, it started where I was on the bathroom floor, just sick. And then by Monday, I had the surgery and everything and was back at the discipleship Monday morning. Um, God moves. When he moves, he moves. The testimony is in three days, I went from finding out I needed a gallbladder removed to surgery in three days. And months prior to surgery, I asked God to let me leave the discipleship. I was done. I had tried to leave a couple times, but God, what? I couldn't find my cell phone. I, they couldn't find my money. Like something always happened, and I was like, "Fine, I'm staying." Um, he just intervened. He was so faithful, and um, I didn't want to do it anymore. And um, the surgery was a way. He gave me that open door um, to leave um, when I was. He knew I would do His will, regardless of if I was getting what I wanted or not. He did not give me what I asked for until. Even in getting what I wanted, I would do his will. 
Um, I know there's some people that pray and, and have seeked God for certain things. And, um, you know, sometimes he doesn't give us what we want um, until he knows that even in getting what I want, we'll, what we want, he'll do, we'll do his will. And I'm just thankful for his um, faithfulness and um, his timing. Because um, if it would have happened any sooner in those months prior to surgery, he worked in my heart through Pastor Myrna, through the girls, through teachers coming in, um, through sermons here, you know, um, and you guys loving on us or loving on me, you know, that that's a big deal, you know, the congregation loving on us, and I'm just thankful for that. Thank you. Amen. Hi, my name's Joe. Um, I got a testimony. It's a lifelong testimony, something God has been working on with me for a long time, and kind of, so... I've lived in about like nine states in the United States and various circumstances, just living, trying to live with parents that are drug addicts or not being able to live with them, you know, um, not being able to live with a lot of people. But the whole point of it is I, I, I am pretty common to a lot of people. I'm a runner. I, well, I used to be. Not anymore. But um, used to be just wanted to go whenever things got hard and stuff like that. You know, I'm sure you can all relate to that. But um, I was just used to it, you know, and uh, even after graduating this program, being a staff member, it just presented with a bunch of things where it's like, man, do I, I know I've done it before, this is my mind thinking at that time, I know I've done it before, I can do it again, but I also know where that leads, <laughs> it's just stupid, it's not good, it's, it, it leads to no good at all, and so a little, about a little bit over a year ago, was probably the last time that I really, really considered it. But I can stand here today and say that God has planted my feet. And that's amazing because of this one thing that God is so faithful for. I, I've had broken family my entire life, and that's why it's such a big deal to me. I testify about it a lot because of uh, God in his word. It promises that he'll put the lonely in families, and that's amazing. And that's just what I've got here if you stick it out, <laughs> you know, really. That's really what it's all about. Times get hard, often, and it happens even to people that have been walking with the Lord for a long time. But the thing with the Lord is, once you get through one thing, you go through another thing, you get stronger and stronger and stronger in your faith and your walk. And I don't know, I just like, thank God I'm solid <laughs> where I'm at right now, you know? I just want to testify that it, God is good. Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. Um, my name is Henry, and I just want to do a quick um, thank God for, um, so I've been praying about something, and I just want to thank Jesus for lead guiding and directing me in everything I do, and also um, uh, where just everything, and, and I've been praying about a certain thing. And it's, it's just a juicer, because you know how I got when I got to the program. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the, um, a juicer, I, I just wanted to just to be, be healthier and stuff. And um, I've been praying about that and looking online, but I don't want to spend like $200. But, um, and then I, I just moved yesterday to uh, Edgar's place. <laughs> And then um, there's a juicer right there in the room. <laughs> it's kind of, um, I guess he knew I needed that. Charles just left there, but that was just, that's part of the testimony and just the goodness of God and everything I do, not just that, just everything, the visits I have with my daughter and a bunch of other stuff. So let everything that has breath praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. <laughs> So he found a juicer that was in the room that next to me, so that's, that's what it was. My name's Edgar, and um, I just want to testify to God's goodness. Um, I graduated not that long ago, about like five or six months ago, and God has just done so much restoration and just everything. 
I mean, I, I didn't have my license for about seven years just because, you know, stupid choices, and you guys know. Um, but I just got it back not that long ago, and then um, I was, you know, saving up for a car, and I was just praying to God. I'm like, Lord, I just, I don't want to get ahead of you. I just want to let you bring this car into my, you know what I mean? If it's not from you, I don't want it. And um, I was looking around, and then I kind of seen one the other day, and um, I, I checked it out, and I'm like, Lord, because the guy went inside to go get the title or whatever. And I checked it out. I liked it. But I'm like, Lord, if it's from you, just give me a sign. You know, let me know. Speak to me. And um, while the guy was looking at the title, he was, like, pretty concentrated. And I don't know where he just stops. And he's like, hey, you like that sticker? And on the back of the sticker, on the back of the window, there's a sticker that says, I love Jesus. I was like, <laughs> I was like, all right, Lord, I get it. You know, I'm like, okay. So, <laughs> So I got the car, and, you know, that's that's my testimony of God's goodness. And, you know, seek him out and he, know to hear his voice. And that's thank you. Hello, church family. How are you guys? Okay. So about seven years ago, I was um really bad if, odd if in my addiction, you know, not carrying out all about the consequences of my choices and um I broke a needle off in my neck and it, it didn't kill me but I didn't care at the time I just kept you know using and shortly like before I came back to the program I started getting really dizzy like to stand up and I was just always dizzy and it felt faint and I would um I would tell Pastor Myrna um you know, I think I think it's that fit. I think it's that needle. I think it's bothering me. Like I think it traveled somewhere, and she would just tell me, "No, it didn't, Gabby. It's not there. God didn't bring you here to kill you. Like you're not gonna die." And I was like thinking, "I don't know about that. I don't know if she's right." Like I was thinking in my head, I was like, "I think I need to go to the hospital." And she, I was like, "Maybe it's my ears or something." And um, I went to the hospital last week. And um, they did an x-ray, and it wasn't there. Like, it was gone, totally gone. And uh, my ears are healthy, and I don't get that dizzy anymore. So. Hi everybody, uh, my name's Darwin Drews. Um came to the program about March 23rd, uh, 2018 or 2019. So I've almost been at the church for about almost five years. God did amazing things in my life and he's still doing amazing things. If you're praying for... Uh, you know, family members to come to the Dream Center. I told my brother Jess about it, and God laid it on his heart. So he's he's here, matter of fact. And you just pray, you keep praying for your your, uh, your so-called loved ones who don't know Jesus, or just pray for their salvation, because eventually somebody's gonna put somebody in their life to speak life. So. I think I was supposed to be up here. I'm still on blackout. But I just want to. All right. All the You'll rules. You'll get a chance, right? Yeah. All the rules. <laughs> <laughs> 
My name is Fred. Uh, July 26, 2011, uh, I went back into a program my third time. Okay. And, and when you read Psalm 107, that was exactly what happened to me. Uh, it was my third time back into the program, and I cried. I cried and I said, I need, I'm here because I need help. That's all I said is, I'm here because I need help. And my Lord answered my <coughs> cry for distress. I've been on a journey, a big journey. But I want to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for not giving up on me. Because it is written, he, he will never leave you, he will never forsake you. And he, his word is true. It doesn't matter how many times you come back, it really don't. As long as your heart is searching for, for the Lord and for help. Because our loving God will not give up on you. He won't. I've been through some battles, and I've been through some growth. My Lord has really changed my heart. Uh, he allowed me to be with my mom when she died. <clears throat> Forgive me been two years I miss my mom but he's given me a new family now which is all you and I just thank my lord that I wasn't still out there doing drinking doing drugs being homeless but he gave me the strength he, to come back. So God ain't going to give up on you. Don't give up on yourself. No. Because that is a battle with us. But if we keep on searching the Lord, we, you will find him. And that's an amazing feeling when the Lord abides in you. Because he knows our weaknesses, he knows he knows us better than we know ourselves. And all we gotta do is just not give up. And that's that's a really good feeling when you know you have a loving God. He's gonna help you through anything, and he will he will be there with you through it. He has given me joy and peace. I'm still having issues with self-control, but they're getting better. I just keep on asking him to fill me with his presence, with the Holy Spirit, to help me in my weaknesses. And just, I give him the glory for all the good he has done in me and that he's going to do in you. That's, the, that's our loving God. Thank you. My name is Sam. My name is Sam and... My testimony is about self-control, because I had to go 30 days without any beef or dairy products. Sure. Yes. 
30 days are over. My name's Todd, and I feel a tug in that direction. Samuel, thank you for that. I think the most important thing for me right now is just being willing to stand up when I have an opportunity to honor God. And I know the enemy talks to me a lot, and I listen to him way too much, but I just need to get my surrender on. The reason I, I don't just hang around, this is my home. Um, I'm not where I need to be, but I'm not where I used to be. My my goal in life is to be completely dead to self and honoring God. I might be slow coming, might might be slow in, in moving in that direction. I've only been here for about 10 years, and you'd think I'd be a lot further. You'd think I'd own a home and have a family, but, you know, God's trying to, I don't know. He's trying to teach me something, and before I can go on to the next thing, I need to learn that. So uh, all I know is that's my goal in life, and when you stood up, and that really inspired me, you know. You were you were nudged by by God, but there's rules, and you know I, I went in the program. I, I graduated one time, and another time I didn't quite graduate. God was trying to teach me something, but the enemy was lying to me, and I wasn't picking up on it. So, you know, there's some really good lessons to be learned throughout the course of completing a program like that. And uh, so I'm really proud of you guys, and I'm so thankful to be part of this family. So, yeah. Yeah. Danny, I love you guys, all of you. Um, our God answers prayers, man. I'll tell you that first and foremost. And Before I came into the program this time, um, there was two huge prayers that he answered. And one of them is um, September 16th of 2022, or no, 2023. I was uh, on my way to my ex-wife's work, and... I'd done something stupid, you know, I had my daughter in my car, and and I was in the middle of ODing, and I didn't realize it at first, and um, so I went and saw my ex-wife, and I was like, honey, something's wrong, you know, I feel really weird, she goes, you need to go home, you know, and, and I was so out of it that I put the car in neutral instead of backing up, and this whole time, my daughter's in the back seat, in her, in her car seat, and I knew I had to do something, and so on the way back, I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed, and I had been out of touch for a long time. I hadn't prayed in a long time. I hadn't read my word, nothing. And that's what happens. When you don't get in your word, when you're not in your word, you're not. You're going to be disconnected from everything. He'll make you feel cut off for a reason until you get back on course. But I was about half a mile from my house at the time, and we lived with her, uh, her, her, her brother, my ex-brother-in-law and I knew what I had to do I had to go to the hospital but I couldn't have Harper there because I knew they would take her from me so I dropped her off and I was praying the whole time like God just give me the strength to at least drop her off you know if I die I don't want her in the car and uh so he gave me the strength to drop her off I was in there for two hours in the hospital I, I went in there for two hours and they got my heart rate down to normal level it was, they said I was about to explode, and and I came out, and I and I was so out of it that I don't rem, I didn't remember dropping off my daughter at all. And and I just opened the back door, and my daughter wasn't there, and I was like, Oh my Lord, Lord, please tell me where she is. Please tell me where she is. Please tell me where she is. And he's like, Don't worry, she's safe. And I'm like, Well, I don't know where. He goes, Trust me. I'm like, Okay. I'm still freaking out, you know, and I, I was starting to trust him, and, but I was still freaking out. I didn't trust him fully, and that was the problem. So I skirted out of there, and I went and found my daughter, and I just held her, you know, and I just held her so tight. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And then four days before I came into the program, he answered another prayer, and I was sitting there crying, and I, I didn't want my ex-wife to see me crying, even though she, she'd seen me crying like a baby before, so it didn't really matter, but... My pride was in the way, and I went into the bathroom, and I was just on my knees praying to God. I was like, God, please let Harper take her first steps. I don't want to miss it while I'm at the program, you know, and all that to say he answers prayers, man, because 
through me deciding to actually follow God and go to the, back to the program when I knew I had to, he actually answered that prayer that night on Christmas Day. On his own birthday, on the celebration of his life, he answered my prayer. That's not selfish, guys. He, on his birth, he allowed my daughter to take more than just one step. But he answers prayers, guys. You just got to stay faithful. And stay on track. And don't veer from it. Because I veered from it. And I'm, I'm living proof, thank God, that he'll bring you back if you... But it just you just got to be obedient, man. No matter what, just be obedient and stay the course. family my name is Laura um I just want to testify to how good God is he's healed me from asthma he's healed me from swelling he's my blood pressure's great um he's just so good and as long as you continue to walk with him read his word every day just spend time with him he will continue to do move in your life and that's what I want to testify today God yeah. is good yeah. <laughs> Nathaniel, and um, well, two months, well, I was in the hospital, and I had frostbite, and, uh, and then I got my toes, in, well, my big toe on my right foot amputated, and then um, some of my toe, big toe on my left foot amputated, and um, my mom came to get, she came down from Moses Lake all the way to Mount Vernon, which is kind of by Seattle area, so it's like a six-hour drive to come get me, and um she brought me down to her house because she said if I was ready to go in the program, and I said um, I said I was, but then after she took care of me and kept my foot bandaged up and all that, uh, I decided to go back to Mount Vernon uh, after I got the surgery done and stuff like that, and I was all healed up because my grandpa was there, and I care about him and felt like I had to take care of him because he's an alcoholic. And um, But then two mo like two months after that, uh, I ended up in jail again, and... When I was in jail, she gave me a call. I think I said this last time. She called me and told me if I was ready to go to the discipleship here in Spokane. And uh, I said, yeah. So then she came down and picked me up once I got released and brought me here. And my lawyer quit on me or else I would have been here earlier. But, um, yeah, I'm just glad that I met all these guys, like I said last time. And uh, I'm glad I chose this place. God is good. Amen. Hey, my name's David. Um, I have to come up after that and tell you, I'm glad you're here, sir, because I'm learning a lot from you, and that's the honest truth. Um, I love all you guys. Um, the Lord just laid on my heart, you know, I can agree with every testimony this far, um, but I remember back when I was 12 years old, the Lord's been working on me with surrender, and boy, howdy, if you know anything about me, that's like, it's everything. Um, but I remember back when I was 12 years old, my PO took me to a, an AA meeting, and I was sitting in the car, and he says, you're either going to surrender and go in there on your own, or I'm going to handcuff you and drag you in. And I, uh, I looked at him, and I thought, well, that would be really embarrassing. Not only was it embarrassing for a 12-year-old to walk into an AA meeting, but to be handcuffed and drug in. So... What I did is I surrendered right there and said, okay, and I walked through them doors. And so sitting here, I was thinking, if I could do that at 12, why can't I surrender to Jesus every day and show him that I love him back for the love he's shown me? I mean, I'm thinking to myself, it's not that hard. Anyway, thank you guys. Amen. Amen.
make my way up, but there's time for one more. Or maybe oh, two. All right. I was hoping to hear from some people I've never heard from, but hallelujah. Um, so two scriptures come to mind when I think about this particular um, testimony. One is um, Titus 1.15, and it says, To the pure, all things are pure, and to the defiled, all things are defiled. And then 2 Corinthians 5.17, which, you know, we should all know, hopefully, and if you don't know it now, you will. You know, those who are in Christ Jesus are new creation. The old is gone. Behold, I have made all things new. And there I was. I was, this is about a month or so ago. I'm, I'm walking back from the store, and I've got my backpack on and got some groceries, you know, and this guy comes walking up to me, and he's like, hey, you know, you got anything for sale? And so in my mind, I'm thinking, well, let's see, I've got some, like, Voice of the Martyr magazines in my backpack. I got a bag of groceries. Like, is he hungry? I'll just give him something. Like, he doesn't have to buy it. And then it clicks. Like, oh, he's not asking to buy the stuff I've got in my backpack. He's asking for drugs. And I just, like, start cracking up because I'm thinking, oh, wow, God. I'm such a new creation. I didn't even think that whatsoever. And I was just like, God, you're so good. You know, and, and I tell him about the Lord. I tell him, you know, hey, you know, I once was there, and God can deliver you. He didn't really want to hear it. But, you know, there I stood, a brand-new creation. Didn't even know what this guy was talking about. <laughs> God is good. Okay, there's still time. There's, we got five minutes. Man, so encouraging, and Psalm 107. If, if some of you have been through testimonies many times, and, and that's a psalm that we've used uh, before as a long introduction to each uh, time of testimonies, I'd encourage you in your own walk, as you walk for years and years and years, however long until the Lord tarries, you know, and, until he comes back, uh, you know, hit won't Psalm 107. And either for reflection upon what he's done, but also as an encouragement for those around us, those that might have, you know, gone back, maybe they're on that wilderness track, right? You know, going around and around the, the mountain a little bit. But God is so faithful. God is so good. He's so long-suffering towards us. He's just that prodigal son story. He's the father. He's looking on the horizon. He's eager to run and embrace you once again. That's the Father's heart. And if you've experienced it, there's absolutely nothing like it. It will transform your life. It will transform your mind. It will transform everything. Old things have passed away. All things have become fresh and new. And you'll be continually renewed in your mind. Thank you for being obedient this morning. You know, obedience brings life. All throughout the scripture, all throughout the scripture, Abraham, Father Abraham, Father of Faith, was obedient to God. God places leaders and staff members and, and people in our life for us to be obedient to. Not because he's oppressive or because he wants to just prove who's boss, but because he, there's an order and he wants to bless us. He really does want to bless us. That's what my message was all about on Wednesday, you know. What's that blessed life really look like? What is Jesus talking about? So, it's been a, a wonderful time of testimonies. Um, next week, we're going to get back into the Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount. I'm eager. I'm looking forward to it. Um, but we've got four more minutes, so... We're going to have to sing a song, we're going to have to pray, we're going to have to do something, because this time belongs to the Lord, and He's going to be honored, He's going to be glorified. So, okay, that's it. I'm the only one up here, so I guess it's me, alright? So let's let's go. Please sing along. Alright? <laughs> well, I heard an old, old story, how a Savior came from glory. How he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning of his precious blood's atoning. 
Then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, God, truly, to you be the glory. God, it is by your grace that we are saved through faith. Lord, it is not of ourselves. We have nothing to boast in. But we will boast in the blood and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, your one and only unique begotten son, the creator of the universe, entered into his creation to redeem those that he loved the most. All of us, Lord, created in your image. Lord, created to be imagers, to be image bearers of God Almighty. And yet we have fallen. We have fallen astray. We're sinners. We are born into a sinful, corrupt world, and we have a heart, Lord God, that is, you know, again, like, like David said, even at an early age, like, why do we struggle so much with rebellion? We're rebelling against God. We need new hearts, Lord. And Lord, you came that we might have life and that abundantly, Lord God, that we might have our old hearts taken out. Our heart of stone would be turned into a heart of flesh, God, a new heart, a new creation. And Lord... There is nothing like a changed life. And I am so thankful to be a part of a ministry, Lord God, in which there are so many changed lives. And to see you've drawn us from all different points of this state, out of the state, this city, cities all around, Lord God, to be brought together, Lord, as a citizen of the city of the king, as a son and a child adopted of the Most High God, our Heavenly Father, and now we are one family, Lord God, and we are so grateful to you, eternally grateful, Lord. God, just bless your kids as we go down and continue to worship you. In Jesus' name, amen.